Welcome back to Creative Katie, the place where I talk about all the things to create. <laughs> That's basically what it is. And so up until recently, we had been talking about tumblers and glitter and epoxy and all the things you can do with cups. I thought I'd do a little switcheroozle this time and talk about sublimation. I have recently become obsessed with sublimating and bleaching. I don't know if you've lived under a rock or you don't go on social media, but sublimating and bleaching are so popular right now and I had to give it a try. So here is my latest creation and I am so excited that it has come out so well. What do you guys think? I've got some, some leopard, I got some bad mom's club because <laughs> let's be honest, that's where I belong. So I thought, why not show you how I got started on sublimating and what the first thing I bought was and where to find all the supplies and then, you know, bleaching a shirt with me and going through the process of actually making a shirt. Um, sublimating isn't for everybody. It can be a little bit expensive to start off with, but I'll talk about different ways to do it without having to spend a lot of money. And then I'll go the other route of showing all the things that you could need if you really want to invest and really want to start putting some time and money in this and making it sort of a, a small little side business. So let's go along. And the first thing we're going to do is kind of look at the things that you will absolutely need to get started with this. Um, and I'm going to start on the lower end and then we'll, we'll kind of build up from there. So let's go. Come join me. Also, before I forget and before we move on, please like, subscribe, and comment below so that I can keep doing this fun content and interacting with you guys. I really enjoy doing this. I really enjoy talking with you about the things that I like. And then don't forget to hit the notification button because I try and update a video every Sunday night. So the first thing you're gonna notice is the shirts, obviously, or the sweatshirts that people are bleaching or sublimating. Don't get confused that you can sublimate without bleaching. You do not have to do this bleaching look. I personally like it, some people don't, and that's okay. And when you're making shirts for other people, make sure to ask them if they want it to be bleached or if they just want a plain look on their shirt. They just want something on their shirt. Either way is sublimating. So the first thing you're really gonna need is a shirt. What kind of shirt sublimates well? Stay away from 100% cotton. That was the first thing I had to really come to terms with. I heard that the higher the polyester count, the better it sublimates. And I was like, polyester, ooh, God, it reminds me of like jumpsuits and like all of these, you know, it just doesn't feel good on the body. But really, polyester has come a long way. And I buy my shirts at Jiffy Shirts. It's a website that is so wonderful. And they kind of tell you like how much polyester is in each shirt. The ones I buy and the ones that bleach the best are these. These are the Gildan Soft Style shirts. I'll hold it up so you guys can see it a little bit better. Now when you go on there, you really want to check the polyester count. In these shirts, the polyester count is 65%. That is perfect. That is exactly what you want. Higher the poly count, the better your designs will show up and the better they will bleach all of their heathered styles so this is like a heather pink i don't remember the, the name of it but i'll drop their link down below all of the shirts that are said heather heather green heather military green heather red heather cardinal red heather sea foam those are the shirts that you want to bleach and or sublimate again you don't have to do both the nice thing about these shirts is they are so so soft they do not feel like polyester. They feel like cotton. They are incredibly soft and your customers and yourself will really love these shirts. And it'll hold your ink without fading. That is the key. The higher the polyester, the less it will fade as you wash it and wear it. And you don't want it to fade because you're gonna work so hard on these and you don't want it to fade. You don't wanna put it in the washing machine and it come out. When I first started, I went to Walmart and I bought a a 60-40 blend, 60 cotton, 40 polyester. I put it in the wash, it was gone. I couldn't see the results of it and I was so disappointed. But as soon as I went onto Jiffy Shirts and found these, these are all I buy. I think you can get them for like $4 on the website. It's really inexpensive and a really nice place to go and buy your shirts. So that's really like the ultimate first thing you're gonna need when you start sublimating are the shirts. And then 
you need to move on to what you want to put on your shirt. If you want to make your own sublimation prints, I went with the Epson EcoTank 2760. There are many, many options out there. Some of them coming in at thousands of dollars, and this one I believe was about two or three hundred dollars. It's a big investment. I will talk about ways that you can get sublimation prints without doing it at home, but I really enjoy the versatility of having my own printer and being able to find prints that I like either on Etsy or online or drawing them myself and being able to print them at home. Now, if you get an Epson EcoTank like I did, it will come with inkjet printing ink or whatever you call it, I don't remember. <laughs> um, and you have to use sublimation ink. So let me show you how I do that. When you first get your printer, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have ink bottles that look like this. Do not fill up your ink tanks with the ink that comes with the printer if you plan on doing sublimation. Because if you do, it cannot be a sublimation printer. The ink will not sublimate onto a shirt. What I buy, oh, it's over here, <laughs> I had to grab it. What I buy is Hippo ink. I get this off of Amazon and it comes in these bottles here. So what you do when you get your first printer is you're gonna empty these bottles of ink. It's, it's a waste, it's a waste of ink, I get it. Uh, but you dump these out, wash them out, let them dry completely, make sure there's no water in them, and then you just fill them with the matching color and then you put it in your eco tank. It's really not that hard and you set up your printer just like anything else, it's a Wi-Fi printer. Um, but the biggest thing I can say is do not use the ink that comes with it because then you cannot transfer it over to a sublimation printer or you can, but it's gonna be a lot more difficult because the ink is already gonna be in there. So if you plan on buying any sublimation printer or an Epson EcoTank, make sure that you know that you need to order this sublimation ink off of Amazon. And there's lots of different options. I just really like the Hippo. I've, I've bought a couple of them and the Hippo ink has really been good for me and I'll, I'll leave that link below. Along with the ink, you're gonna need sublimation paper. I use a sub paper. It's pretty inexpensive on Amazon. You get a bunch of it. And I use the eight and a half by 11 because that's the biggest size that my printer does. If you buy a bigger printer like a Sawgrass or a bigger, what is it, EcoTank 1500, I think, um, they, they do bigger prints. But for my purpose and what I wanna do, I bought a smaller printer, save a little bit of money and be able to do the size of shirts that I want. So let's talk about if you don't want to invest in a printer. Um, again, the versatility of a printer is great because if you find something, you can print it right away and put it on a shirt, which for someone like me who is impatient, that works really well for. If you don't want to spend that amount of money, you can go on to Etsy and there are tons of people that will print out the design that you find and send it to you. Or you find a friend <laughs> who has a printer and sublimates and prints something out for you. So I have a couple examples over here um, that I had printed out, but they're also things that you can get um, on Etsy. You can just search, Google search sublimation prints and they will print it out for you and send it to you. So that's a really cool way to save a little bit of money, not buy yourself a printer. However, if you do plan on making this a business or you know that you're gonna be making a lot of shirts, really take the time to invest in a printer because people are gonna want prints and you're gonna to have to wait for someone to send them. And then by the time you're all done with that, you know, and buying them, you could have already bought a printer. So just kind of thinking about maybe when you first start out, a printer isn't really what you want. You just wanna bleach a couple shirts for yourself and you wanna order these online. But I really do enjoy having the ability to do it right away. So what else do you need? You may be thinking, okay, I'm gonna get a printer. I'm not gonna get a printer. I need to get paper. I, I don't know what paper to get. We got that covered. Um, and then you're thinking, well, you know, and we got the t-shirts covered. That's, that's like number one, I think, is knowing where to get your t-shirts and then kind of branching out from there. So now you're thinking, do I wanna bleach my shirts? Do I wanna leave them as is? Either way, it's your decision. Um, just know that the bleaching is really, really, really popular right now. And so you might get people who see your shirts and say, hey, do you bleach your shirts? I want a bleach, I want a shirt that has bleach on it. And you're either gonna say, oh, like seriously, I don't wanna do that. Then that's fine. That's your business. That's what you wanna do. Don't bleach your shirts. 
I don't care. You may have people who are like, okay, fine, I'll go somewhere else. Let them go somewhere else. If you don't wanna bleach shirts, don't bleach your shirts. However, <laughs> if you do wanna bleach your shirts, I just use, <laughs> where's it going? <laughs> I just use straight Clorox bleach. That's it. I just buy it at the grocery store or buy it at Walmart and it's done and it's really cheap. Um, the biggest thing is what type of spray bottle to use. You're thinking, yeah, but it's just a spray bottle. No, 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 no. So when I first started out, I used this. It cost a dollar. I got it at the dollar store and I was spraying along and the sprayer broke. It breaks. It's, I'm not even going to push it because probably it'll like spray out. It doesn't work. And it leaves your shirts looking a hot, hot mess. So I took to the internets. I typed in internets. What is the best spray bottle for bleaching? And it came back and laughed at me and said, mm -mm. so if you plan on doing sublimation or really any craft and you're on Facebook, um, find a group. I found a sublimation group and they turned me on to the best spray bottle money can buy. This is the Cadillac of spray bottles. This is the Porsche of spray bottles. The BMW, the Cadillac, whatever you call it, it's the best. So it is glass and it is so fabulous. It has two spraying nozzles. It has a, a flat like and then it has a mist, which is both what you want when you are bleaching. So you go on Amazon, I'll drop the link below, but it comes with two of them. And it is just so smooth. There's nothing in this. There's, it's so smooth and oh, it has changed my bleaching life. So if you plan on bleaching, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a good quality bottle because I used this one and I ruined a bunch of shirts. So there you go. Buy this bottle. I'll put the link below. So now, you know, we've got our shirt, we've got our bleach, Let's go outside and bleach a shirt. Come on! So I live in Vermont. There's not a lot of sun. Normally, if you're gonna be bleaching shirts, it's best to do it on a sunny day because the heat will help the bleach turn white. If you don't have any sun, that's okay. You just have to let them stay out for a little bit longer. Normally, I leave my shirts out here for about two or three hours and it gets to the point that I want it. If you don't wanna wait that long and you're impatient like me, you can always throw it in the dryer but just know it kind of makes a really yucky smell. And if you have kids or dogs or you just don't want to smell it, just let it sit outside for a while and plan accordingly. So I'm gonna use my glass bottle that I mentioned earlier that I got off of Amazon and I use straight bleach. You can put water in it, but it doesn't give you the same results. So it really depends on how you want to do it. So all I do is I lay out a box on the driveway. And then if I want to make the square that I showed on my other shirt, whoops, it's a little windy today. I really just kind of plan it out. So I will spray out the size of the square that I want. And the nice thing about these bottles is it has two different spouts. So that was the rough one. And then this one is just the spray. And I'll spray inside this box and I'll know what kind of picture I want to put in there and what size it needs. And remember less is more. So then I do the box and then I change it to the spray and I just put it randomly on the shirt. It doesn't have to be perfect. However you want to do it, it's your shirt, go for it. And you can tell that it's already changing. It's already turning a little bit white and it's already changing. It's going to look orange first and then it's going to go white. So I'm just going to leave this for about two to three hours and then we'll come back. It's only been about a couple minutes and you can already tell that the shirt is changing color. I love seeing how quickly it changes because then I know if I need to add anything or if I went a little too overboard. I think in this one I went a little too overboard, but it's okay because it's my shirt and this is how I want it. Now again, we're going to leave this for about two or three hours and then we'll come back. This is only after about, I want to say 30 minutes. This is why I love this style of shirt. It bleaches so quickly and just flawlessly. And I might have overdone it a little bit in the middle, but Again, this is my shirt. I can do what I want. But if you want a little bit less, remember less is always more. I like my shirts really kind of this bleached look, but you might want it a little less. So I'm going to let this go for a little bit longer. I don't want to go too much because it's already pretty white. 
and then I'm going to do the back and then we'll come back and we will use my brand new heat press. Look, my heat press came in. Heat press nation came through. So I'm going to set that up and then we'll get pressing on the shirt. So I let the shirt sit for a while, brought it inside, did a quick wash. I do not use any fabric softener. I use a tiny bit of detergent to get that kind of chlorine -y smell out of the shirt and whoop bam it came out so good. See, this is why you want the type of shirt that you get on Jiffy shirts. It's white. It's what I wanted. It's pretty. It's got lines. Again, bleaching is an art. It's however you want to do it. But I am pretty excited about it. So now we pick a design and then we're going to press it. Let's do it. Okay. When you pick your design, the number one thing you want to remember too mirror your design always mirror your design which i didn't do i didn't mirror my design so you gotta go and you gotta mirror your design because when you flip it see if you can see it can you see it through the back it's backwards your shirt's words are going to be backwards and there is nothing more frustrating than printing it on a piece of paper not noticing putting it down on the shirt and realizing it's backwards because you just ruined a shirt that you took a lot of time to bleach. So make sure to not do what I did and not mirror it. Phew, that's settled. So now you can't read it. <laughs> so you know you did it right. So make sure to always mirror your image because otherwise it's gonna turn out backwards. And now when I look at it from back here, and you probably can see it too, now you can read it. <laughs> so make sure to always mirror your image because then you're going to get mad and have to go upstairs and get your computer and have your kids ask you what you're doing. Nothing. I'm not doing anything. Leave me alone. Okay. So you've got your image. We have got our shirt and now you're thinking, how do I put it on a shirt? So there are, well, there's really one good option, but there are two options that you can go with. Let's talk about them. So the first option and the most cost effective option is a Cricut Easy Press. This is what I've been using up until, well, today, <laughs> when my heat press came in from Heat Press Nation. Um, this is okay. I use it for this shirt, actually, um, and I've been using it for shirts all along. Uh, after doing some research on the Facebook groups that I was talking about, people were saying that you would get a much better press with um, a heat press. And after practicing a little bit with the new heat press that I got, they are so right. Um, the problem with the Easy Press is that you don't have constant pressure. The heat's there, um, but you're having to do the, the pressing yourself, and it's really uneven. I can tell even on this shirt that one side is darker than the other, and you really need that consistent clamshell clamp down um, to get the proper results. So if you have one of these, or you can find one for a good price and you're just starting out, by all means, like press the shirts. I used it for um, this shirt as well. And it's fine, it came out just fine. Um, but if you're moving towards wanting to do this more, um, you're gonna wanna invest in a heat press. And let me show you the one that I just got. So this is my heat press. Um, I got it, wait, can you see it? I got it from Heat Press Nation and it's a 15 by 15 clamp down. And as you can see it right there. Um, it also has the pull out drawer, which is really helpful. And you can see it pulls out right here. And this is where your shirt is gonna go. So that's why it's so helpful to have the pull out because you can put your shirts on without touching the heat because it's really hot and you wanna be careful. So let's press a shirt. Let's give it a try. Um, so the most important thing is to make sure that it's centered. <laughs> Do I measure? No, I don't. I don't measure. Should I measure? Probably. Um, there are a lot of things out on the market that you can use to measure. Um, I just haven't gotten one yet. So I'm getting my shirt on there. I'm really just kind of seeing if I hold it up where the image is going to go. And then I just make it flat. This is the image I'm going to use. I showed you that before. And I'm going to put it on my shirt. And I don't want it too close to the collar. So I'm just going to line it up like that. You need to make sure to put something in between your design and your heat press because otherwise the ink is going to transfer onto your heat press and you don't want that. I went to the grocery store and got non-wax 
parchment paper. You can use copier paper, but it's gonna transfer and I don't think it really works that well. So you put that down, make sure that it's flat, and then you're gonna push your design under the heat press and push it, make sure it goes all the way through. And you may need to readjust if it looks like it's gonna shift a little bit. Then you pull up, pull this down, and let the timer go. I have this set for 385 for 40 seconds. You're gonna know what works best with your heat press by pressing your shirts and knowing what works for you. So remember that image I showed you that I did before, and this was on my Easy Press. The blacks are pretty muted, um, but it still came out fine. It kind of has like that vintagey look, and if that's what you're going for, then that's fine. And again, the Easy Press is okay. Like I used it for a while, and it works just fine. But let me show you the difference between this one. So remember, we saw this. And then let's see what the shirt looks like that we just pressed on my Heat Press Nation. All right, so she's all dressed up again. So remember the sweatshirt I just showed you? The blacks were kind of muted out, a little bit like my t-shirt, but I wanted the vintage feel for this one, so that's okay. But then, look at how vibrant this is. The blacks are just flawless, and there really isn't that much of that vintage feel. And I am obsessed. It came out so so good and remember in a world full of trunchbulls be a miss honey just remember that but i i'm really impressed i really am and i really feel like that heat press made a huge huge difference the cool thing about sublimation is you're not limited to just shirts you can do sweatshirts you can do pants like like jersey pants um, you could do hats, you could do cups. I have not gone into the cup realm because I tried to do it and my cups burned. Um, but I have been making phone cases. Here is my logo and I had sublimated it on the back of a phone case, which is really, really cool. Um, and I'm loving the versatility of being able to make the shirts that I want that I see in the stores and the shirts that I see online. So. This was kind of just like an easy kind of tutorial on what you would need in the beginning if you wanted to start sublimating. Remember, you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money. This is a craft that you would have to invest some money in. You would need a heat press or an easy press. Those are the two things you can't get away with. You would need something to press on, like a t-shirt, but those are inexpensive. This sweatshirt I got at Walmart and it works great. Um, I would suggest going on to Jiffy shirts or there's also all day shirts which I will link below, where you can find the Gildan soft style shirts that I use. So those are some things. So the shirt, the easy press, um, and then a sublimation design. Those are the three things that you're really going to have to invest in. There's no way around that if you wanted to get into sublimation. Oh, and also parchment paper, but that's cheap. You can get that at the grocery store. So yeah, crafting isn't cheap. <laughs> Goodness knows I've sunk a lot of money into my crafts with between tumblers and sublimation, but it's a lot of fun and it allows you to be creative and it allows you to make those things you see on social media. And if you market yourself well, you could make a little bit of money. So I hope this is helpful if you were thinking about diving into sublimation and wanting to know how to do it and what the types of things you're going to need. I think next week what we're going to do is we are going to talk about putting images on shirts that do not involve using sublimation. I really enjoy sometimes doing a nice heat transfer vinyl. Those are the types of things that you can cut on your Cricut and then you use your easy press or you use an iron even or a heat press and you can get really cute looking things. So let's do that next week. Let's talk about things that you can put on shirts or put on pants or whatever you want to do that do not include sublimation. So then that way, if you still want to make those cute shirts and you have an easy press, but you don't really want to buy a sublimation print just yet, then let's talk about that. There's so many options and so many crafts out there that I can't wait to show them all with you. So if you like this video or any of my other videos, please like and subscribe and comment so that I can keep doing what I love and talking about crafting with you and going shopping with you to show new craft ideas and new craft things. So thank you for watching. Go out and create. Come back next week and come join me on Creative Katie.